just gets involved with uh, Doggy Dead's doctor or James on the end and just starts kind of walloping him, silencing him, or, or just reducing his health pool to really Prepare inconsequential levels, then I feel like that's the perfect year for them to die. Uh, I mean, obviously, he might be able to definite blast or tornado or something to, to pull them off the tower, but as it stands right now, you can't go for the, the classic alacrity exhort max opener from the invoker. He has to play very defensive. If anything, I feel that a Quas Wax would actually be really good this game. Not so much at a Quas Exhort. Really rough. Uh, I mean, to say, Quas Wax would be really good just because you know, these heroes deprive them of the mana and the PL. That's where he will excel and it synergizes pretty well. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. Like, he's really vulnerable till like he gets a couple more levels and like maybe to level five until he gets a Ghost Walk or something. Otherwise, he should be fine. If any hero should be babysitting him, it might be the Tuscar. So they, uh, they can think of uh, turning around these fights. Dazzle should be the one at the bottom lane of the PL because that's where they have most kill potential between these two heroes alone. Yeah, yeah. I do think that Wax should probably be limiting his uh, potential to be killed off uh, most significantly. But I have to argue that Exhort might be preferable just for the synergy between him and the Beastmaster. Roar, Sunstrike, and one of the classic spell combos since. The battle begins. Very early in uh, Dota 2 and even uh, for a while in Dota 1. It's, it's very old, but it's probably the most common uh, combo of spells that you used to see between uh, heroes like this. Uh, especially the fact that they both get through BKB now uh, is really strong in terms of just making sure that uh, well, whoever the Peace Master targets has a very sad day and you pretty much find yourself a kill every 80 seconds. That's true, and it's really a lot of nuke as long as you get the roll on the right targets. But I'm kind of concerned of who they have to take down the tombstone. Yeah, but it's gonna be demons babysitting in Vulcan mid. Jane, the one for DK, so he wants to really pressure in flame, but in flame shouldn't have much trouble this lane. Oh, I like Jane's movement though with DK. Like the kind of just walking up to get an auto attack onto in flame. Normally you wouldn't go for that kind of move, but all it wants to do is make the touch closer to him play and force them to essentially always get the double decay. Look at this one dying! He has a thousand max HP now with five stacks of decay. And he can just go right on whoever he wants. They really can't fight him at this point. Um, he doesn't have any good items, but I mean, he walks right up and, and scares him off. Really suppressing things early on here. Yeah, but this is only temporary. I think it should last maybe at, at most another minute more. And James will want to be doing something else. The advantage is, is already here for the TA. Won't be long before he starts like stacking ancients or something. Bottom lane, I mean, Rand actually almost died. He's already been forced to pop the self because IC has been so good at zoning him out because he does trading as many hits as they can, and that's before he even hits level two. By the time both these heroes hit level two, they actually can be kill Rand if they want with the doppelganger heal bomb. IC doesn't have the mana. So, it's just going to be a little bit of question about the Mango and the Tango. We'll be doing enough for Slaughter to stay afloat here in the lane. Um, interesting to note that actually Invoker's Quas uh, aspect, uh, when he goes ahead and just puts three Quas Orbs up, is actually really strong against the Decay. Um, I usually talk about like Witch Doctor being a good response because Voodoo Restoration, while you your Decayed up, is sort of a really effective nice. heal, very cost efficient uh, in terms of mana for health you're going to get. But the claws regen doesn't cost any mana, and you're continuously just oh, top lane This might be first blood, there's a hate on James, so James is gonna just run him down and the zombie man gets first blood. Actually no, it's going the way of the queen of pain. So, very timed and very unfortunate for June. Yeah, just uh, not something you can really prepare for, just moving around with boars. Uh, that's just no response there. And actually they're gonna go in, haste expiring, but still just right back to the mid lane to start doing the exact same thing. Invoker in flame, they don't want him to get much in terms of CS right now. He's only 7 and 4 against the TA's 11, and STA approaches 5, 6, and 7. He's going to be that much stronger against the Arsenal Vegas. Well, this is really big at the bottom lane. I mean, um, the Tusk used his shards to block out Ran. All of his consumables have been now. So right now he's at level 2, he has to walk all the way back to base mm -hmm. and back to the lane is just a long time when he doesn't get any exp so this is where june can sort of overtake him lane yeah potentially but i mean right now june is doing so poorly himself he did get one uh radiant pull off here to get the elders involved in target with this the last hit uh, and june does play one so not only is a, a melee creep going zero percent experience to the dire but he does get the last hit through the axes on that Hellburst Master and gets, of course, one third of the experience. So, 
all in all, uh, both offlaners having a hard time, but Beastmaster currently pulling ahead ever so slightly. Now that Undying James has finally left the lane so the Invoker can sort of catch up. The state of things are doing very, very well. Ame is 22 and 11. Actually, the same amount of last hits as the Queen of Pain. The neck and neck. And who's gonna win the race here? I don't want to be the slaughter because, yeah, they can actually get a kill to Dazzles here, but pity's not. Like I mentioned, James, back to stacking Ancients. Invisibility! And can't really contest the top three. And the NCA with refresh and will the movement speed advantage. Uh, uh, well, she would if she had boots, but um, still just able to kind of control that position. So, the play going for the Strider build, and now maxing Wasp, or at least getting the second point in it. This is for survivability purposes. So, all just to uh, withstand the Undying. Uh, he wants to get some more CS in the lane, and while last, uh, usually attack damage is the best way to do that, in this case, is actually the HP region that helps him the most. Ran down bottom, one more Lance will put him into uh, near fatal range, Dyer's but they just can't close on him effectively enough, so nice. Moving we through the trees keeps them healthy, and they'll get a lot of experience here under tower if demons doesn't come off. Dyer's structures and Mino and Dazzle, he used to invis when he did. Tri Dyer's he actually blocked off the ancients. Ice Stalker suspected that, and uh, actually he tries to find the ward, but he's not going to find it at all. Lane, they almost killed the slaughter, bringing him to half HP. Nice Stalker's looking for the counter kill, or Radiant at least just for a bit of defensive movement here, but he's not going to find it. And actually, just a bit more insight oh. into the invoker. Oh, this should be a kill here. Yeah, yeah he'll ball off that snowball and finish it. Hoggy can't do anything for him. Oh, that was just really, really good. Heal bomb does so much damage to the doppelganger. So it's set up nicely, and uh, yeah, Sodar again having some trouble. The tower taking a lot of damage throughout this whole process, and uh, yeah, as you mentioned, the central rewards not going to be favoring them as they they do lose out uh, the ability to set their agents with. Really. So that's actually two heroes on the other side who have no last hits at all. Slada has not had a single last hit or deny for five minutes. <laughs> Maybe he gets his first last hit? <laughs> oh, the whole for it! Yeah. Oh, he gets it. There we go. Down it. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, root control is going to be really important here, but talking really not doing as much as you might want for the most uh, recent nights. He's halfway done with it. Just picks up a value room, no DD or haste. So, yeah, his skill potential is pretty lacking, and you're going to see him probably just sit on that one assist for like some time. I mean, Demons is a little bit caught out, but he's quick enough that uh, Void would not be setting up a sprint crush, and that means that he's going to be fine. It's going to be TF Young that just oh, the he kills for one to one. Oh, they got a the full set coming in too. This should be a kill. As fast as the Hunter the Knight may run, it is just not effective enough. When the free gun rotation comes through, it's going to be Dazzle to pick up the last hit as he actually had a Lacrity, so a bit of a nice damage boost there. So, Crosswax in Boca, it looks like. And actually. I mean, like I said earlier on before the bottom fight, um, a bit of insight into why you would pick the Invoker. One of the good things is, because of the class, he's not heavily reliant on a bottle. So this is why he they kind of foresaw that with the Undying pick and, you know, with whatever mid hero was coming their way. They knew that aggression was going to come and it's very unlikely that they, could, they get to contest the ruins, which in this case you can see, yeah, the flame hasn't even bothered to even try to leave lane. So it's a really good pick. Yeah, and uh, of course you're going to be able to kind of disrupt opportunities in terms of initiation. You try to blink in with a squad R and you just get uh, knocked up by a tornado EMP. And all these strike heroes have a really low mana pool, so EMP is going to hurt uh, their potential in the fights. I mean, I would I would actually compare EMP if it connects to like a silence or ulti. Like all these heroes just run out of mana and their cords can't cast single damage spell. Um, and they're not the ones that are prone to going arcanes. We see the Undying maybe go for the, the arcane boots, but generally speaking, he's the only one that would traditionally acquire. Dyer's bottom mm -hmm. tower. And now Pierre gets himself a nice tower hit. Reno Pain is still doing very well at the top lane though, making her way towards the Orchid. June can't really do anything about contesting the farm, but he is getting closer to the level 6, so that's a bright side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Does, uh, James shot. Nicely done with the close snap. So, good pick up there. Uh, not really the most consequential one, just a level 3 and dying, but at the same time, that'll uh, put Invoker really in the driver's seat here. It might even go like an Orchid build up. Uh, that's the most common build up you used to see for Web's Invoker. More often now, I've been seeing Genomitis. Um, 
but in this case, he's gonna go for a tank build first, go for kind of combat oriented items, and the orchid would work along those lines. I mean, getting quick silence on the Queen of Pain or the Slaughter uh, could be a, just a huge boom uh, in terms of the team fight potential. Has the urn picked up, and now they're going to smoke. He'll probably hit to the top lane and kill this Queen of Pain. And with the urn, with the cold snap, it really goes well together. So, in flame, yeah. is actually he's actually overtaken TA in terms of net worth. Yeah, uh, he's uh, it's a good tool for doing things on burning refraction, triggering the cold snap, and of course just allowing them to keep fighting, kill up yeah, the James. So James, yeah, absolutely. He drops him, so that's going to be an being just free, more free gold. Very easy for them to clean up, and it's going to be in flame to get that last hit there. So. Oh, he didn't have the urn at the time, though. That's unfortunate. I thought he had it, but still, uh, gonna be able to push heavily on this tower and really suppress FTD, where they thought they would be kind of gaining momentum at this stage of the game instead. Uh, during this daytime, in particular, C deck are starting to run them over, and this is Invoker coming online a lot more rapidly than you normally expect. One of the good things about playing Quartz Wax Invoker, you don't see a Quartz, yeah, Quartz Wax. You don't see a Quartz Exot Invoker that often nowadays. But even against like Meeples and stuff, when you think, oh, okay, I need that extra damage. No, it's usually the Quartz Wax Invoker nowadays, which is being picked up in this meta. And I don't foresee that the Queen of Pain will be roaming that much, unless FTD starts to roam by the second night time around 12 minutes. So for now, they are not going to do anything. They're just going to play safe and just keep farming up. Oh, gonna be you know, safe down bottom. I see is going to be fading in the cold snap, and now looking around with the poison touch and a lot of right next tornado. And uh, a few more hits, all that requires for Ren to go down, and that can be the first soul immediately given over to Icy. Fueling his Urban Shadows and using uh, the Dazzle very effectively there as bait. Very efficient kill. And um, one of the pains of playing against Inflame. Yeah, he, he was actually really, like, so preemptive about that too. Like, the CP came out about six seconds before the Slaughter started looking for that opportunity. So, Inflame was already there and ready. And, uh, yeah, like, Wax Invoker, Wax Invoker utility all the way is going to be coming into play here. And he's just the perfect counter initiator. I am a bit skeptical with this extra point in the exit. I'm thinking back to the meaning. Maybe he just did a bit of extra damage with her ass. Oh, yeah. He's he's been, been, he's been been oh, no. Uh, the melt and the amplified damage, the ghost walk isn't going to help him, but he's going to use it for the extra move and speed. So, yeah, he will just run away. Even if the sprint is not enough to catch him, and they will just give up. Yeah. He not only invokes the ghost walk, but immediately throws on three wax balls. And then, uh, obviously, goes well, all of it enhancing his movement speed to, to disengage there. So, uh, good on him. And now he looks to be going into. I mean, he could go for a, a site to really complement the full disable, but it, that seems ambitious. He might just be going for something like a Yules, which is still great in the fights. I mean, that's like a second for uh, just on a single target and really messing with the well. Great for catching people, too, because FTDV don't exactly have the best lineup for retreating besides just laying down a tombstone in the sprint that's pretty much it so now i think they want to pressure the mid to one secure a bit more map control they can actually do roshan quite easily you know if there's an echo book coming up on june which should be up in a while he just has the belt of strength but that's it oh that's a smoke on hitagi they want to find a kill they want to fight here yeah, but how do they actually get the fight to work? They're already going in with this double so on the floor, coming out on the Queen of Pain. A lot of damage. Nice soul coming at the Queen of Pain, but James goes down. And the EMP comes out. On the base, he's going to be limping away here. Throttle and Shadow Grave is going to be plenty to keep him alive. And now I feel like it's going to be Inflame that needs to be focused down. As Alex keeps on getting healed, Inflame is the one that gets melt struck. He will be going down. And Queen of Pain trying to get away from the Beast Bastard with the axes. And one more right click will kill her off. Now June uh, has three traps to run through to try to get home, and that'd be a too long a road for him. That'll be actually a four for seven kill score as we do see. Gonna go for more. Oh really? Wow! wow. Yeah. Jumping in on ice, that's another nice kill to follow the club with, and of course the great is going to pull down, but it might be too deep. That's a snowball wall. If it comes out, Red will go down. Still finish off the Nazar Ame, trying to get on to James, Flesh Bull or not. Oh wow! Oh my gosh, that Melt Strike with the Flesh Bull is absolutely insane. Just decimates the Tusk and now putting some good hits into Ame. Buyback coming in for the Nazar. Looking for that TV Shadow Grave uh, to really just turn this around completely because Ame seems to be having some trouble. They drop the Sentry Ward as needed, finish the job there, and the TA Bounty 
the invoker. Oh, what is he? He's not one of the back. He'll get the full gold out of that, but even still, FTD really showing what they're able to accomplish when the fight starts uh, building the weapon. And CDEC, it's worth mentioning that Radiant's June, before he died, he actually attack. didn't lose anything because he got a thousand gold Radiant's after killing the Queen of Pain. So he actually got the staff of Wizardry just before he died. He was just hiding them enough with the bar. And it was a good buyback from IC as well because even though he died, he, you know, he has such low net worth that the buyback timer penalty didn't really affect him. So he actually got the full gold and still gained from that fight. And after the kill in TA, going back just enough. Now he has probably more white money. Yeah, and I mean, to argue maybe they didn't need his buyback to secure the kill in the TA, but the sentry ward being there just as a convenience to get the, the D ward in the western part of the jungle as well as find her in the melt, that's that's huge. So yeah, it doesn't cost them hardly anything and, and they get so much try turning that factor out on the tail end. But even still, it was overall I would say a victory for KD. The fact that they were able to take the fight is pretty much the first bit of four momentum they started this game. Are fortified. Mm. And okay. yeah, I think CDC youth they're not too concerned Radiant's about that fight. They actually got attack. back a lot more, and now they're going to get themselves a nice T1 in the top lane. So oh, over here, demons stuck in a world of hurt, sandwiched between all these heroes, and Queen of Pain's going to get it lasted. They're going to look for a bit more, and just take dagger. And oh, oh, he gets the find IC and defensive burn charge wasted from the Hitagi. And the bird's going to get it shot down. Okay. I mean, it just goes for the farm, so pass the time for now. Uh, they took the tier one up top, the last hit going to the invoker, and uh, he builds himself up the yields completely. So this is going to be a no minus build from the invoker. No way he goes back for it now. And uh, yeah, we're just going to be seeing him use his spells here right back. Probably not hitting level 25 this game. Uh, it could possibly stretch that long, but it's completely a check wave and snowball. But all these spells are, are not really good against the boss. Any other hero there, yeah, you've got some spell potential. Here, Queen of Pain just blows away. Now it's caught by the tomato. While well, the Tusk actually gets hit by the Night Stalker, True Strike will make sure Queen of Pain gets knocked up. But Demon's actually the one under the boss of fire right now. One more void could bring him low, but instead it's lame. Uh, just trying to disengage. Gets crushed, gets in under the Tombstone Zombies, but the Snowball just. Oh no! Oh no! Going deeper and deeper into the Sonic Wave! Cell Field is not going to be enough here as they get crushed again. Demons going down as well. That was not uh, the the snowball they were looking for. That is going to be a TDB evening up the kill score here at 16 minutes. There was definitely some miscommunication. I think Volker, he actually almost got away. He managed to invoke Twalk, but he clicked on a zombie, so he just killed himself. Unfortunate. I mean, I'm sh there, there's gotta be some spell wandering around that might have, might have killed him off. Anyway, he was so damn low, but Radiant's no matter. Uh, yeah, he, he just panics out in that situation, and that gives so much momentum to FTD. Uh, what a small victory they claim uh, from the fight uh, a couple minutes back now turns into a dramatic one as they take a tower, as they take a, a massive kill flux, and, and now they're just buying, using it to buy out a bunch of wards. The Slaughter will pick up a Blink Dagger soon enough. Desert with it on TA. Queen of Pain has her Orchid, and the supports otherwise are just buying as many wards as possible to try to get in the back map control from a position where they were kind of, kind of blind. And alright, Rand's getting closer to his Blink. He's 200 gold away from it. And um, actually, that fight, I mean, TDC Youth, they have every right to be afraid because they lost that fight. Even though they had, it seemed like they had that initiation advantage, but that was with the Queen of Pain Sonic Wave. She had no mana for the Sonic Wave. Otherwise, FTD would definitely have fought there. But she'll get that cooling down now. She, yeah, I mean, it was a pretty good one that she dropped onto the Tusk and Bumper in the end, just to make sure she went down, down quickly. But uh, in the end, Right now, Cedar Cube just have to kind of recoup. I have to start farming up hard on this PL, make sure that he gets relevant. And right now, Drums, BOT's PL, he's good at killing Tombstone, but otherwise, he's not contributing all that much. So, I think Ame wants to get one more item. Blade of Alacrity, I assume, means that it's first. So, uh, if you use Manta, obviously, the progression is going to put him really in uh, an offensive position. But right now, FDB, I feel like they have a lot of tools to start of getting control over the mid game. I mean, you've got the Rosha, which should go really cleanly to the Templar's Mass, which actually already tried to do it a little bit. Uh, I looked at it earlier, it had like a third of its health missing, but uh, in the end, 
um, with the blink dagger as well as uh, of course all their negative armor. They should have a lot of the middle lane. They want to go in flame. Oh, they get the answer on TA as well as the flame crush. They move your board and ice shard is out though. Those flames survive for an amazing amount of time. If he hits that TA, this will be her last refraction to play around with. And the ghost walk and the shelter grave gets the invoker out. Nobody's down yet. The ran is very low. Maybe looking to go back in. Okay, quick combo of strikes going up against Husk. Now on the back on the pit of pain, cleans up the beast master to move in. Headed for the hills. So with that, they will take two hills. They will take Roshan and they will take the offensive. Yeah, and like I mentioned, that's why, you know, the pain of the Queen of Pain, the Sonic Wave, it had such a huge impact, hitting into four targets that fight, and they just have no way to cope with the Tombstone while dealing with the rest of the aggression coming out from the TA, with Deso, and the Sonic Wave. You know the Flash Ball was complained when the Sonic Wave yeah, came out? Yeah. That would be huge, too. Um... No, it wasn't. He just laid okay. the tombstone down. He had it after the Sonic Whip was thrown out. Gotcha. But that's uh, such a great synergy. A lot of people don't think that pure damage can be like, mitigated or enhanced, but no. Flesh Gold will enhance all damage received by a target. So if he's right up there with the, the ultimates, and then the Sonic Wave gets dropped down, that's half the enemy's health time. easily. It's, it's insane attack. how much you can really just rack up there. And it feels like they just invested too much in getting the flame out of there. He self-fuels. Uh, he, he goes Ghost Walk by Shallow Grave, they do everything they can to bail him out, and they have nothing left for Radiant's anybody else left to be kind of on the dire side. So, very quickly, it seemed like they were on the defense of that fight, and obviously the Sonic Wave was the, the key turning point. And I'm actually doing the math right now, like, if you have the Flesh Golem up, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. plus the Sonic Wave, you actually bring the entire CDEC youth to low half HP. Yeah, it's, it's really strong. And uh, of course, she's going to put her back in her scepter. Now, I think of BKB, but I think, like you talked about in the draft, BKB is kind of weak in this game. So I would I prefer to see the Agonyms. And if you get that with the Flesh Golem uh, and the Endives close to the fight, then boom, you've got a nearly guaranteed uh, fight until the, like, the mechanism comes out. But I think I'm going to stream and talking dead outright. Uh, Ran? What are they in Crush Country? Coming in, and they actually start to turn this game. They're great to take as well. They're still going to be the Flesh Gold wandering. The Sonic Wave is tough too. And IC drops extremely low, but the Phantom Lancer keeps spraying the flank off cooldown. He can't finish off the Dazzle, and June TP's away in the trees. They actually can't clean this one up. Okay, they still can do this, James. He's followed by the Necro unit and the boar. He's going to Glimmer Cape away. And they're looking for him. They can't find him. Oh, wait. They're just going to back off. Oh, and yeah, he's still going to clean up. They, they fully disengaged there and playing really just couldn't find anybody away from the team fight. They just they lost so much early on. They were again another fight where they're pretty much in full retreat as soon as that Sonic Wave hits. 2100 damage from the block there. And that crush was just so huge. Oh, Dusty, Blake, and crushing in flame. What a combo there. And I'm wondering, oh, the coach walked deep up. That must, he must have walked just too close to one of his opponents and they, they do catch him out. Very nicely done from FTD. So currently let's take a look at the gold graph. It's a 5,000 advantage for FTDB. EXPD wise, also a bit of a 5,000 for TDB. With the tombstone, it's really just doing so much in the fights that the CDEC, they have no answer for it. James, getting low. Um, yeah, they do get him. So this is now another way that FDB can fight this, but they want to fight with the Aegis, but getting a piece of Spring Rack Crush with the Heal Bomb, it's going to be the Aegis pop already in June. It's going to be dropping very low here, just sort of out of the fight, Blood Axe is all he's got left. But it still might be enough, they do drop the stun Ward onto the belt, and yeah, it's going to be GA going down. So, good um, defense with the bottom tower, as well as kind of punishing FDB, run a fight without the Sonic Wave, that's just not going to work out for you. 1200 cold swing hitting in favor of CDEC youth and yeah it looks like it's gonna be a BKB not Aghanim Scepter for the Queen of Pain which is huh. sad. I mean it's good against the PL. The PL diffusal obviously burning mana and the active slowing her down makes it hard for her to move into fights and she's probably gonna be a high priority target if she doesn't have a BKB but because Poker didn't go for Orchid and as we mentioned uh, a lot of moments go right through that BKB I'm not completely sold on uh, this purchase. It's it's not bad because the PL is such a threat, but at the same time, uh, it's seems unnecessary. 
Alright, so for now, yeah, this PL is getting really out of control. He's hitting towards the Mantis style now, and I really don't see how FTDB can cope against this PL. He gets more and more farmed up, because after the Manta, he's probably going to hit into like a Heart or an Eye of Scotty. Yeah, Mantis Scotty seems pretty appropriate here. I don't think you want Butterfly in a game where there's so much uh, build base damage. At least not until your sixth slot. We're actually going to see Critic Mages laying right into Tusk and accidentally find himself a freebie kill. But they might try to turn around here, Cold Snap and the damage. But no, the good Invoke is a level one Invoke. So he has actually no way to respond to that situation by changing his uh, arsenal. That's actually <laughs> very unfortunate. They couldn't possibly make. Uh, with a cold snap, the PL would have definitely kept her locked in place. But instead, she gets the free kill out of complete blind luck. And uh, from there, uh, c Dex's aggression up top is halted. Oh, well. And yeah, they probably should have gone in the Queen of Pain. Very unfortunate, like you mentioned. I mean, at the same time. They probably were afraid of all the TPs since they're so near the T to the top lane. Well, no, it's it's more so the fact that he did, he only has level one invoke. It's a 22 second cooldown, and all he had uh, available was Alacrity ENT. You can't do anything there with a PL and Alacrity ENT. Uh, you can you can perch and then she just blink out. It's not there was no kill potential there because of the spells invoke. Oh, 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 I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. He's still in a really difficult spot with Tornado. Then the Roar. That should be enough to get into the play. But Queen of Pain is still here in the fight. He's going to be able to uh, focus down along with the TA. He's pulling off the Beast Pound, pulling off the Sigil. And a Sonic Wave on the flank is going to be bringing Demon down to 100 HP and finished off for good. So Inflame once again is out of the fight, but he's got amp damage on him still for a little bit longer. They try to finish it. It's going to be actually Icy if they focus down. And Ame Icy trying to make a play on Ram and completely fail in that regard. Uh, James, under like 4,000 century words, are uh, going to be just barely limping away from these illusions, but walking away with only one death. Considering how things went, I think that was probably one of the best case scenarios you could have gotten for CDEZ Youth. They were quite lucky not to have lost the Invoker. He was kiting oh. around Queen of Pain. He was trying so hard to get the double Sonic Wave off, but he only killed off June, and I suppose he was just content with that. I mean, yeah, what did, I think CDC used to lack the damage because they're so close yet so far from killing off like a Queen of Pain and dying Radiant's every single fight. Tower is under attack. Yeah, they, I mean, the Tusk and the Beast Master bring control, the Dazzle brings durability, but because it's a Wex Invoker and uh, PL hasn't really hit his peak, they just, like you said, don't have the damage. Right? Just say Rand gets the Blink Crush on a flame here. The Cell Mules are, would not be enough, so it's gonna be another kill from Queen of Pain, 8, 4, and 5. And she is, she is living up to her name. This is insane. And now, we're going to see him go for the ace. Slow cross, BKB, Orca, that's base breaking the table right there. Well... Radiance middle I mean, it, it's notable. Attack. Should be noted. Oh wait, oh, should be with DA. Might get wrecked here. I think no. will get wrecked. No mana at all. Beastmaster gets himself, gets himself a nice freebie. 530 gold. Closer to the Necrobook. Oh wait, who he has the Okay, He should be a Blink Dagger next. Yeah, and it, like I was saying, I mean, PL almost has the Manta style. Yeah. By then, I mean, he's going to be really tough to deal with. FTD, they should be noticing this. They should be worried because every time in the fights, they can't kill the PL at all. They can kill everyone else except the PL. They're always usually very low. So with a bit more, I think he can actually win the fights the next time around. Yeah, big rush timer coming up. Well, if this is a short spawn, FTDB can take the Aegis, start looking at all the tier twos, and then maybe one tier three tower um, before that Aegis expires. But if it's a long timer, then Nolly can see that. Oh, it's a very short timer. That is a, a pretty much minimum spot, just just about, and the TA trap will see it instantly. But yeah, uh, Beast Master will at least count it out. But nevertheless, I feel like the fact that PL won't be able to farm his next item before they're dealing with the uh, Aegis-oriented team fight, it just makes it much harder for CDF to, to bring this one back. Uh, I think it's just tough. Oh wait, it looks like yeah, they're just going to do Roche. At the same time, I mean, I think CDC, yeah, this is probably the fight they want to take, but they get a good weave and they just need to be able to kite on oh, an Illusion rune for army. This is going to be a very good rune. Yeah, the Illusions will certainly help, but... 
I think we must wait it out. They might just say, okay, well, if you're here, you're not farming, and we can just kind of control the pit. They they keep on screaming, or killing off the, the birds. Oh, but bird might find her out. Oh. He's gonna turn TP to the tornado, and the BKB no. will not be enough with the roar. Oh, man, that was a pretty big mistake from the Finnefane. And could c actually look to snipe this, or is there still too much net? But the tubes on the high ground and the blink rush. Radiance can definitely tower. take this. Without the sonic wave, this is their rush. TDEB, they may be forced to have a pin buyback just to contest this Roshan. And they're going to use they're happy if they're still just going to back out. Radiance top tower is under attack. So we'll try. Yeah, if uh, the sword blinks in, I think they'll get So that's going to be both sides kind of just breaking away from the river. Yeah, of course, that's a small army here, but in the end, they're more of than anything else. I think the fight should be over. Uh, if C continue to try to force this Radiant's position, then they're going to be very, very sad very quickly. That being I said, um, Rush is half HP. Queen of Pain's buyback is unfortunate, but her BKB will be coming up in 20 seconds. So it looks like they still want to force this here and now, even though C and Kiyom are in position to get that. Tons of mana issues everywhere. I mean, you can see the illusions really causing so much noise in the Night Stalker. And I think the demons, yeah, they just want to get a good point. Oh, wait, oh, 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 we're gonna get taken off the Shallow Grave. We'll help him out. Three men here. As far as we will do his duty, and that's gonna be a great Sonic Wave going across as well. Invoker, the target of the Queen of Pain. Yeah, he gets roared, and now Queen of Pain should be going to go down. While CA tries to clean things up, can't get the range, but no problem. James will kill off the Tusk, but in the meantime, Ame taking down two here, or just to pick up the Night Stalker is plenty. They can't get into the Tombstone just yet. In fact, Ame is now putting stuff on the flip in seconds, but those two here is down to die back of Queen of Pain. That's uh, turned out to be Roshan for Sia. I feel like the Queen of Pain, considering she had just fought that, uh, was far too far forward, no matter the BKB. They really needed to win that fight, but they were just kited all around, and the last thing you want to fight against is a PL, especially in prolonged fights. I mean, this Whoa. is exactly what CDC's draft is uh, prolonging these fights, and without zombies, without two stone, there's no way FTDB can this place so just really really well played from cdc to kite the fights in you know from the high gun advantage now even this ta you can see you know she had decent far but now she's falling behind yeah, yeah. it's uh, gonna be attack. trump to the network by 2k and it looks to be getting a little bit worse uh, as the moments are away. Of course, Ame now has an Aegis, so a lot more confidence for him. Um, but I really just feel like uh, big aspect of that is kind of pain going for that second blink forward. Uh, obviously, the first blink just going on the Tusk, no problem, but blinking up to the high ground here just to try to finish off the Tusk puts him in such a compromised position. They're able to absolutely punish that, isolate him, and uh, break him down. And they just didn't get enough out of their opener. The fact that they grave, of course, negated the initial burst on the tusk and they had to chase him so deep uh, just made things really bad for FDB as they got sprung out. Dyer's now tier 2 goes down in mid and Ame pursues uh, bottom as well. This is so much gold as well as uh, soon to be a heart by the scene to I have to point out as well the gold graph has swung 7,500 so it's now in favor of CDC. So that's a Dyer's very huge drop. Has fallen. And uh, at this point, I don't think they'll look to break high ground. They're happy with just not only evening up the net worth graph, but uh, pulling slightly ahead and getting control over the map again. That's probably the higher priority here. Just maybe to the point that they even pop an economic gun just to de ward or to get vision. But right now, though, we have got the Invoker picking up a very late Orchid. Uh, we've got Jube, Link Dagger going into Vlad's. And just overall, items just straining down for Cena. Yeah, it's not that they don't want to pick the high ground, they can't as well, just because of, you know, it's so hard. Like I mentioned just now, I mean, without the tombstone, they can't fight, but the high ground defense with the tombstone and the sonic wave, plus the flesh golem. And I mean, if Rand gets another, like, three-man crush, just no way to do it. So right now, I feel that FTD they need to make use of whatever resources, whatever precious time they can. So they're going to go for a form and smoke and probably try to look for, like, a straggler in the back. Yeah, but it's not going to be anybody really vulnerable here. They've got all five up on top, ready to push under this tier 2 tower, and that's pretty much already dead. They do have Glyph, but you don't want to Glyph your, your last tier 2 when they could go to the tier 3. Instead, they'll go jump on it and play one back front. He's not going to cut it. 
now he's being very slow. And that isn't because he's playing on the attack line, but I didn't the break off in time. So now it's the roar coming out onto the Tempo Assassin. She can't do anything to spider BKB. And Ami's just gonna absolutely destroy her in just a moment of time when her BKB expires. Despite the crush from the Slaughter, she goes down, and now they've bounced back Slaughter for another kill. The great fight from CDAC. The fact is, it, it was a really hard contest from FTD. They don't get the crushes they need to start that fight off. And then the Sonic Wave isn't that great either. Oh, now Hitagi caught out by the Orchid, the Urn, the Cold Snap right click, and down he goes to 3 for 2. And the wall right from the high ground with all fours for at least critical force alive. This is just really hard for FTD, I mean, their Dyer's peak moment is long gone. Is now that the PL is so farmed, there's just no way to kill the PL right now. Dyer's top tower has fallen. And now the, BK, the lower progression BKBs are also really hurting. Attack. Like, obviously the TA only, only lost, well she didn't have a sense of that, that, that's not really Dyer's the case for her, but the point of the game, she's been using Dyer's BKB every fight, and, and now she doesn't really have much to work with. With the TA, mostly it was just the roar and other things uh, kind of delaying its impact. But all in all, C deck, they, they seem to have the ability to sustain and, like you said, drag out the fights and to the point that they're able to. Uh, th essentially, they strike their first kill every fight before FCDB do, and that's kind of the opposite of the intention of uh, between heroes like Templar Assassin and Creative Band. They want to instigate somebody, they want to take them out of the, the equation very early on in the engagement, but so far this doesn't been really unfortunate. These graves have been game winning. But we're gonna get crush. I mean, he still has that or uh, Aegis. He just goes ahead, Mantis, and says, come at me. PL, he's just crazy right now. I mean, just his Dyer's illusions look. He's pushing back James and the Night Storm. So they can't really get close to like go for Tombstone or what, whatever. Now, this is gonna be probably Dyer's another lane of Rax, unless FTDB, you know, they have to fight, they have to defend. I'm not sure how they're gonna do it, but they oh, have to defend. They're blinking hard, the Aegis is caught, they really want this crush. They're gonna get it on the two here on the campaign. BKB blinking in, but she gets roared, and the sun is still up for four seconds. Roared the people up just on the nose, blink away. When they talk to the down left after dead, and again they get that first kid killed. As of them, without a trick, without a first prayer, he'll be crushed down thanks to a great sonic wave. The tornado is not really going to be just changing the situation. On um, this still, though, I love his positioning on the front line. The fact that he wards off the Templar assassin and says, "Don't even think about approaching the back line. Don't even touch my supports." And as a result, they don't really get to have much out of it. They pop their ultimates. They go in at the perfect time when the H is gone. But Ame is so tanky, it doesn't seem to matter. They go ahead, right onto the racks, they've already taken top lane, and they're about to take mid as the illusions start to take hold. James needs to just go back and heal right now, I'm not sure why he's oh, standing there. Oh, great orchid from mid lane too. So the preemptive orchid, as soon as he sees the slaughter moving in. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about you, Blades, but I think this is GG. See how you come back from this at this point. Yeah, they'll go back and pick it up. As long as they don't beat all five here, it just looks like that's the opposite of the case. We'll go on red, and that's the, the death of the Slardar. Doggy as well, caught out once again. Really, I mean, it's a 1 8 level of the Night Stalker, just not much for him to do, and he seems to die pretty easy. Gonna be GG, call back to DB. As you said, it is just too far gone at this point. It's gonna be all three lanes of racks. And it is gonna be elimination of FTDB from the Star Ladder High League Chinese lower bracket playoff track. Alright, so I mean that was just really good. Like I like I pointed out, FTDB, the optimum timing for all the heroes just to wall off. And since they weren't really taking objectives, they weren't controlling the map enough, which is what you're supposed to do for Night Stalker. It just really backfired on them so strongly.